Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel. This video is part two of my four part series on solo female travel. In the last episode, I talked about all the reasons why you should give solo travel a try. And in this video, I'm going to share with you how to plan your solo trip. I'm going to start from the very beginning, from how to choose a destination, how to build your itinerary, tips, and other suggestions about how to plan for the best experience on your solo trip. I'm Sarah Stilke. I'm a scientist, and this special four-part series is all about how to travel the world solo. Before we get started, if you could take a second to like this video and subscribe to my channel, I would be very grateful. The first step in planning your solo trip is to decide when and where you actually want to go. There are a couple of ways you can approach this, so I'll discuss a few options. The first way to choose where to travel is to start with a destination in mind. Take some time to make a list of all the places in the world that you want to go. There can be tons of reasons to put a place on your list. For example, you can choose a place because they speak the same language as you, such as London. Or maybe you love Italian food, so you put Rome on your list. Perhaps you've always wanted to see the Eiffel Tower or the Egyptian pyramids, so you put Paris and Cairo on the list. This is your trip, so you don't really need a reason to choose a destination other than because you want to go check it out. I have planned lots of my solo trips using this method, but there can be other times when you're not sure exactly where you want to go, because you've already been to the places on your list, or because you want to travel on a budget, or simply because you want to experience someplace completely different and outside your comfort zone. In this case, I really enjoy using Google Flights to find destinations by price. To do this, go to Google Flights from your computer. I find that it's much easier to do this from the computer than the phone app. Then enter your local airport as the starting point and leave the end destination blank. Then when you click search, a map will pop up, showing you the prices to fly to all the destination options from your city. You can narrow down your search if you have particular dates in mind, or you can just leave the dates open to search by the cheapest times to fly. Using Google Flights to browse the destinations is super fun, and it lets you daydream about where in the world you might want to go, as well as find some of the best prices and times to travel. One funny story about this, one evening a few years back, I had a little bit to drink, and I was browsing Google Flights for fun. I found a round-trip ticket to Stockholm, Sweden, like three weeks out, for something really cheap, like $270 round-trip. The price was only available, though, for a three-day trip, though, so I ended up booking the trip, I ignored the jet lag, and I spent an incredible three days solo traveling in Stockholm. Once you've chosen your destination, take a few minutes to research the best time to visit the country. My personal favorite time to travel to specific destinations is during their shoulder season. Basically what shoulder season is, is the period of time between a place's peak season and its off season. For example, if you want to go to Costa Rica, a quick Google search will tell us that its peak season is from late November to early April. This is Costa Rica's dry season, when most tourists choose to visit and prices tend to be the highest as well. I would recommend during visiting during shoulder season, which would be October or May. The weather during these times should still be pretty good, and you will get to enjoy the benefits of fewer crowds and lower prices on things like plane tickets and hotels. Thinking about plane tickets and hotels, once you've chosen your destination and dates for travel, the next step in planning your solo trip is to plan what I call the skeleton of your trip. That is, transportation and lodging. These things are going to make up the skeleton of your trip, because regardless of what activities you do during your solo trip, you're going to need to get to your destination, and you're going to need a place to sleep. I know that lots of solo travelers like staying in hostels, because they're generally less expensive and provide great opportunities to meet like-minded people. I personally started traveling in my late 20s and was fortunate to have a job that involved frequent business travel, so I always stayed in hotels on my trips and have a lot of points to do so for free. I like that hotels provide lots of privacy and the safety of a home base, and if you have loyalty status and points with a particular chain like Marriott or Hilton, you can use your points to stay in hotels for free oftentimes and enjoy the benefits of free upgrades to nicer rooms as well as complimentary meals. I could go on forever about how to use credit card points and hotel status for solo travel, but for now, let's continue planning our trip. Of course, no video on planning a solo trip would be complete without talking about safety. This is probably the most common question I get from people in my life about traveling solo, 
especially as a woman, is how do I stay safe? Safety while traveling is so important that the entire fourth video of this four-part series is going to be dedicated to how to stay safe, but for now I'll just touch on it briefly. I am actually pretty paranoid about safety, even in my own, own hometown. I live in downtown San Diego and I am fully aware that there are safety issues and crime in my own city, and I always just take standard precautions. I know which areas to avoid, especially at night. I avoid drinking ex excessively when I'm out. And I always follow my gut whenever a situation seems a bit sketchy. When planning for your safety abroad, it's always important to use common sense. But also remember that unsafe situations can happen anywhere, including in your own hometown. Just do a little research before you go, choose destinations that are generally considered safe, and practice common sense without also being too paranoid. The United States State Department website has a list of travel warnings and considerations for different destinations, so you can always look those up to help find safe destinations for solo travel. The next step in planning your solo adventure is to create your itinerary. This is the point where personal preference will come into play, so as you listen to my advice, as always, take what serves you and leave what doesn't. I like to keep a Google Doc to help with planning all the details of my trip, and when it comes time to plan activities, I personally like to keep it kind of casual and only lightly scheduled. For ideas about things to do at a destination, TripAdvisor is a great resource, as well as travel blogs about things to do in certain places. If there are a few things that I know I absolutely must do in a certain place, I will buy those tickets in advance. Personally, I love going to the opera, so I'll look up if my destination has an opera and see what shows are playing and buy a ticket in advance. If there are certain tours I want to take or landmarks I want to see, I'll go ahead and book those now and schedule the time to make sure that the sightseeing happens. Aside from those few things, I try to keep my schedule pretty open so that I can wander around the new place and leisurely and spontaneously explore things. You never know when you're going to come across something awesome or encounter a, a new thing that warrants some extra time. And one of the benefits of solo travel is that you can spend as much or as little time on different sites and activities as you want. With that being said, I also want to make sure I have a bunch of great options of things to see, do, and of course, eat. On the Google Doc I use for planning, I'll browse through Instagram sites, pages, blogs, travel sites, and make a general list of sites and activities that I might want to do. Um, activities that I might want to do, and restaurants or specific dishes that I might want to try. That way, I'll have this list to guide my free time and know I'm making the most of my trip. This is just how I personally like to plan my itinerary. You may prefer to have a strict itinerary before you leave, with exact plans of what to do and what to eat each day, and that's totally okay too. The benefit of this is that it is your solo trip, and you get to plan it however you want. Now that you've planned out the main parts of your itinerary, the last thing you should do before leaving is a little bit of research on the logistics of your particular destination. Transportation is a big one. Does your destination have a good public transit system, and is it reliable and safe? Do they use a different currency? Are credit cards widely accepted, or should you plan on using cash? What is the tipping culture like at your destination? Can you get an international phone plan so that your cell phone works when you arrive? What should you pack? It's easy to get overwhelmed by all these little considerations. And in the next third part of this video series, I'm going to talk about all of those little things that you might want to consider to make your trip the best experience possible, and so that you don't have to repeat the same mistakes that I've made over the years. One final note on planning your solo trip is to relax and enjoy the experience. Even if you plan the most perfect and detailed itinerary, your travels will always find a way to surprise and delight you. Just make sure you're open to new experiences, because you never know when you're going to discover your new favorite dish, or type of music, or style of architecture. The best part of traveling the world is discovering new cultures, people, and ideas. In the next part of this four-part series, I'm going to share with you some of the tips, tricks, and best practices that I've learned over the years, so that you can go into your solo trip feeling more confident and prepared. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.